Welcome to the Perspectives with Catherine Toon podcast. All right. Well, everyone, I am super pumped to be here and introduce someone you may or may not know, but I feel like we've been tracking so long and I'm like, this is the brother that it's taken me a while to meet. Uh, so welcome, Dub Alexander, to the podcast. So happy to see you. Awesome, Catherine. Thanks so much for having me. Been looking forward to having this conversation and so glad that our mutual friend Dustin connected us uh, a ways mm -hmm. back, but it's time oh, yeah. to have some convos and let's it. Do it is. Isn't it fun? So it's really, it's really cool. And, you know, I've been uh, sort of catching up to where you're at and just the kind of how you're sort of position and oriented what you're doing in the body. So let me read your bio real quick. That'll give people kind of a 20,000 foot view. And then we'll just dive in. Does that work for you? Sounds good. All right. So, uh, okay. So Dub Alexander advances the kingdom as a global statesman, leveraging his United Nations access to bring prophetic strate strategies to the heads of state around the world. When he's not traveling internationally, Doug can be found equipping prophetic kingdom reformers through his online school, School of, uh, school of Kingdom, or sharing the platform alongside other kingdom generals at various conferences and training events. Doug resides in Amarillo, Texas with his beautiful wife, Beth, and daughter, Cinda. Did I say that right, Cinda? That's it. That's adorable. What an adorable, I have this, that's a new one. Anyway, so, wow, I, this is so impressive and you're so down to earth and this is so fun. So yay you, <laughs> all that you're doing. Wow. Excited so, to be here. Yeah. And you have quite the journey uh, and getting to, you know, to this United Nations platform, all this, all the things that you're doing. Can you just give us a short synopsis? Cause I want to make sure to give you lots of time to share on your hot buttons about the kingdom, the prophetic, whatever, wherever you want to go. So can you do that? Cause I think that will help people. Yeah, I'll be glad to. And, uh, you know, I, I like to start by saying I'm just as shocked as everybody else. I did not, <laughs> I did not see any of this coming. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really just been a surprising journey, but a good one. It starts uh, with uh, the truth that my father was a cult leader. I usually don't lead with that, you know, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, my it father was happened. a cult <laughs> Yeah, it happened, cult leader. And so I ended up uh, running away from home when I was 16 years old and was taken in uh, by an amazing family called the Urquharts, Mark and Cinda Urquhart. That's where my daughter's name comes from. And so, uh, yeah, so the cult that my uh, parents were involved in and, and that they, they started their own uh, type of is kind of an Amish-ish uh, mixed with like super legalistic and then a lot of uh, crazy charismatic pieces. Uh, and with none of it being healthy at all, all mixed together into this hodgepodge. And so I uh, ran away from home when I was 16, got taken in by the Urquharts, who were going to Dallas Baptist University at the time. And so kind of went into the into the Baptist realm, which was great at that time for me. You know, uh, they were just kind people who love uh, love Jesus. And although the theology isn't that great, uh, you know, the hearts and the people were exactly what I needed at that time. And then from there kind of went through the, you know, into the non-denominational and the seeker friendly and then the light charismatic. And then when I started getting around some healthy prophetic uh, and learned how it was that God communicates his heart to me, I began to wake up every morning to the question, what is the kingdom? I was like, I don't know, Lord, like I didn't, uh, they didn't talk about that in Bible college. And so uh, that yeah. set me in pursuit of trying to figure that out and finally came upon uh, Dr. Miles Monroe's book, Rediscovering the Kingdom, which has uh, just some amazing uh, revelations surrounding that and the truth that Jesus, that's all Jesus ever preached. It's all he ever talked about over 101 times just in the gospels, the kingdom is like telling us to seek the kingdom first, all of those things. And uh, so that really caught me on fire. That was uh I guess coming up on 12 years ago now, and I've been as jacked up about the kingdom ever since. And uh, so my journey from there was, you know, I tried to bring the kingdom revelation into the church space that I was working at at the time, and it didn't go super great. So I gracefully excused myself, but I realized that uh, the kingdom works everywhere. 
did you excuse yourself or were you excused? Were you dismissed or did you? I just did excuse on? myself gracefully. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, just in time. And uh, so I caught that the kingdom works everywhere. And I had a history in, in arts and entertainment and the music scene and still had favor there. So I was like, well, I'll just take it into uh, arts and entertainment. Uh, but then a prophet came through town and uh, said, Dub, God is remantling you for government. I was like, okay, Lord, like, I don't know anything about government, never had a conversation with a government official, any of that. Uh, but then the Lord said, you know, Dub, you understand my kingdom, which is a government, very well. So it doesn't matter what man's king uh, government is brought before you, just shift it to align with my way of doing government, and you'll be fine. And I was like, all right, Lord, that sounds good. And so uh, from there, doors began to open, you know, as I began to be obedient and to steward that word. And, uh, you know, before I knew it, I was sitting with high level government officials and I discovered that um, that my prophetic really went up in those scenarios. Uh, I love the way Dana McCollum teaches it, that your metron, the measure of rule that God designed you for, uh, when you find yourself in that arena or in that sphere of culture, you'll know because your prophetic gifting will go up. Uh, he says it this way, that your, your prophetic gifting works everywhere all the time with everyone. But there is a place, a time, and a people group that it will work at a whole nother level. And that's the indicator of your Metron. I found that to be true with government. And so I just began to really specialize in how do you prophesy covertly? How do you take a, a word of wisdom, a transformational prophetic strategy, and verbally engineer it into covert secular language so that the government official in front of you can receive it, whether they're Islam, Buddhist, atheist, whatever? So that okay. they can implement it so that their people can experience the goodness of God. I call it the strategies of heaven delivered in the styles of the king, all for the sake of the people. And so that's how I wound up doing this. And then uh, Dano was like, hey, man, I love it that you sit with the kings of the earth. But would you rather sit with a king of the earth once a week or raise up thousands who know how to sit with kings daily? I'm about impact. I was like, let's raise up thousands. And he was like, well, you should start a school. And so started School of Kingdom and. I just uh, love getting to equip people and uh, love getting to see uh, the kingdom of God advance in a healthy manner, uh, representing the nature of the king correctly. Yeah, you just hit on a hot button. You know, my my things, every everything is is God is love and it stems from there. So his kingdom is the kingdom of love. The king is the person of love and, and the ways of the kingdom are the ways of love. And, you know, yeah. when you when, when you uh, 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 sort of uh, sort of dissolve it down to uh, sort of the, the basic component. Um, and I, I, I love that, but I, and I love the, oh, it's so good. This, the sneaky prophetic that is necessary to people who have no grid. Yes. And you know what, what I, I love too with that is that they don't have a grid, but something resonates and they're able to flow in that because that prophetic empowers them to flow in something that they may not even know they're flowing in, which is gorgeous. And then for the people who maybe don't have a, a grid for the prophetic, maybe they're not, haven't been brought up in a charismatic stream or whatever, that it, it, they're just so able to receive it because mm -hmm. intuitively we start to resonate in our beings with what is of that. And so it's beautiful. And then maybe the people who were abused in the prophetic, right. Are able yeah. to receive kind of in the back door where maybe before it was hijacked and there were all sorts of unhealthy agendas, yada, yada, you know, we, we have stuff in, in the church and outside the church, we just have stuff as human beings and are able to receive that. So that is amazing. I love that. And I had kind of uh, shared with you a little bit. So, you know, when when my first impulse, when we were just talking about the kingdom, I'm like, yeah, I need help there because the kingdom has been so hijacked. You know, it's not the kingdom Absolutely. of love. It's the kingdoms of this world. And then sometimes we do the kingdoms of this world in Jesus name, which is right. extra, extra oh, toxic. Right. I mean, that just cuts you out. And you, my good, you know, my, my dad started a cult might know a little bit about that. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> And so what a, what a way to, you know, coming from that place and just redeeming it. Like we're, we're redeeming all these things Come on. that have been hijacked and that is so exciting and empowering. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I am just open to receive this revelation about the kingdom, about the front, whatever you want um, mm -hmm. with that. Um, you know, and one of the things actually, as I was listening to you, we were talking about um, 
the Rethinking God with Tacos podcast you were on, yeah. one of the things that just boom hit me, so really sort of gelled it down for me. And I so I thought I'd bring this up and maybe you could just launch. You said the kingdom is familial in nature and governmental in structure. Thank you for helping Catherine Toon. So, mm -hmm. um, so just launch off. I know you got a ton. So just <laughs> how do you want to elaborate on that or, or yeah. start, start from a different place? We're all good. Love that. Thank you. And a big shout out to the Rethinking God with Tacos guys. I know that we both enjoyed being Thank with you. them and, and love yeah. what they're bringing to, uh, to the body. So, yes, I would believe that the, the kingdom is governmental in structure, but familial in nature, and that we are royal sons and daughters uh, who are meant to rule and reign here on earth uh, over territories, atmospheres, and things, never people, that's domination, and thank that's you. demonic, thank not you. kingdom. Oh, thank and you. so... <laughs> okay, say that again, because that will help someone else if, other yeah. than just me. Can you say Absolutely. that again? Rule uh, over... Yes. So to, we are meant to rule and reign in this physical dimension, and I'll get into why here in a second, but when it comes to the ruling and the reigning, it's over territories, over atmospheres, and over things, never people. That's domination, not dominion, and that's demonic, not representative of our, our king. And so, unfortunately, the majority of the kingdom streams or the prophetic streams, because they have misunderstood the nature of the king, they cannot help but misrepresent his ways. And uh, because of certain theological filters that most of them still adhere to, whether it's penal substitutionary atonement theory, eternal conscious torment, or the Bible being the word of God rather than Jesus, uh, because they have misunderstood the nature of the king, although their hearts are good and they are trying to move in purpose, they mismanage uh, their responsibility and therefore misrepresent the kingdom. And it leaves it, you know, with a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. But or, or harm. Let's oh, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so yeah. yeah, people are either, either hurt or turned off by it. Right. One or the other, but, uh, I refuse to let, uh, my inheritance go due to, uh, the you misrepresentation. Do it. Do it. <laughs> and so when it comes to that, that family aspect and the ruling and the reigning, I love Genesis 126 when we're eavesdropping on a conversation amongst the Trinity who has existed forever within the context of loving relationship. And they say, let us create mankind in our likeness, which begs the question, what is God like? Well, God is like other focused, self-giving love. And so that is how we should always represent the king. That is the nature of the king in our likeness and in our image. Now, the image of God shown all throughout scripture is a king on a throne ruling over a territory, hence the word kingdom. And it says in one of the Timothys, it calls him the king eternal. And so God's kingdom has, has always been. God has never had a coronation day. God has always ruled and reigned rightly over a territory within the context of other focused self-giving love from the bottom up, not the top down. As my buddy Ryan Pena says, there's no hierarchy in the kingdom, only an hierarchy. Yeah. And no <laughs> and hierarchy in the Godhead because sometimes we say, I think it's I'm father, out. son, and Holy Spirit. And so right. we're basing everything on that distorted thing because we're so hierarchy minded. So yeah, so, sorry, keep on going. As soon as hierarchy shows up, it's interesting. Jesus says to be aware of two different mindsets, mm -hmm. uh, the leaven of the Pharisees, the leaven of Herod, which is the political mindset and the religious mindset. And both of those are hierarchical structures yeah. and dominate people from the top down. Mm -hmm. The kingdom is a foundational structure and supports humanity from the bottom up. And so, so when we see that likeness and image, and then it says, and let them have dominion. Mm -hmm. And so God, who, who knew he would be, that they would be the best ruler over this new dimension that they are creating, mm -hmm. because it is always the heart of the father for the children to get to know what it is like to be mature. They, in their sovereignty, choose to sovereignly withhold their sovereignty and give rulership of this new dimension to the son and the daughter. I like to liken that to, uh, you know, uh, not so much now, but when she was a, a little younger, whenever I would get home, my daughter would always want to wrestle. And, you know, sometimes I would let her win, you know, like, because I wanted her to know what it felt like to win. Yeah. And so it's like God creates this territory and he's like, we're going to have sons and daughters and we want them to know what it's like to be like dad. And so let them have dominion. And so 
everything would have been fine if we had continued with with the likeness and the image of God at the center. But it says in uh, in Romans that they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and they exchanged the father of truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. They exchanged the father of truth for the father of lies, and the, they began to operate in domination rather than dominion. When the Trinity says, let them have dominion, dominion, how do we see the Trinity operating in dominion? Oh, well, they show up to a, a state of chaos. The earth is formless and void, and they bring order to the chaos so that it produces a blessing for humanity. They, they show up, they bring order to chaos, and it creates a territory for the son and the daughter. So that is how we should be moving in dominion on the earth. We should be able to show up anywhere that there is chaos in any sphere of society and without, without domination, mm -hmm. extend an invitation to bring order, to bring dominion to that chaos so that all of humanity is served well and gets a taste of the goodness of God. Okay. And so I think that when we come back to the original intent of the kingdom, oh, it's the original intent for mankind. And Jesus came to reestablish us in that place as his representatives, those who represent the king rightly, and to be the gates through which the heavenly solutions to every earthly problem can flow. And so that's what we got to get back to when we hear kingdom. <laughs> so... Good. So good. You know, gosh, my, my mind is going a lot of different places, but this is yummy. Uh, what, what, what really smacks me is that we're getting back to original intent. We're getting yeah. back to original design as sons and daughters. And the only way that we can do that is to look at the King and the Come King on. Christ, the, 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 the human God, Christ as a human God, reflecting his father in the spirit, in relationship, eternal relationship, which is always about other giving love. And mm -hmm. so that's what we're looking at to get back to the place. Okay. So who are you? Who are we? And out of that place, how, where do we operate from to release the goodness, the love of God in all the metrons? And one of the things that I was thinking, cause you were talking about making, uh, order out of chaos and so what you're doing in the school of the kingdom and just wherever you show up and teach whatever is actually bringing order out of chaos in the earth of our minds that yeah. have been operate in a fallen way of seeing god and seeing mm -hmm. ourselves and then out of that operating in fallen ways of being that violate love mm -hmm. i know you have different terminology for that um, but that's incredible. And then releasing that in, in all these different metrons, which is incredible. Uh, you'd also mentioned something that um, so often in the kingdom, not only do we use higher hierarchical top down language and operate in that, but we also use military language there's mm. violence right and you know you take the kingdom of god suffers violent and the violent take it by force i would love yes. to hear your take on that where does that fit with this benevolent kingdom of love with the king of love uh, operating through his kids so yeah. wherever you want to go with that it's great awesome yeah so sometimes i like to say that we operate in an upside down backwards kingdom and mm -hmm. so when we hear that the violent lay hold of it by force, uh, I would agree with that. However, the violence in the kingdom is violent peace, violent joy, violent gentleness, mm -hmm. violent kindness. It's really anything that does violence to the system of darkness uh, by bringing the light. Not, right. That's against everything that opposes the well-being of his kids. Yes, it's yes. Violent emotion, a violent, like, no, that puppy's going down. That's harming my kids. It's not okay. Right. right? Yes, so 100%. Hijack that. It's good. And so, whenever we have that um, hierarchical mindset mm -hmm. and we have domination rather than dominion, mm -hmm. and then we add to that the idea of um, the idea of domination, hierarchy, and then the military piece. Mm -hmm. the violence, and the yeah, militaristic violence. piece mm -hmm. is a huge issue because the kingdom is a government, but mm -hmm. it is not military. It's ambassadorial. 
And so when I work with people in the UN, I have, I have friends who are ambassadors. They hold governmental ranking, but no military ranking. Yes. And so we are not the army of God, despite all of the songs that would say Thank that. You. Oh my God. <laughs> sorry to deliver us from evil right here. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> we are not the uh, the army of God. That's the angelic, actually, is referred to in scripture as the army of God all the time. We are the executive branch of the government, and uh, we should be showing up to bring legislative opportunities and how to bring order to chaos, right? Mm -hmm. And so whenever that military thing starts creeping in, it it's, gets super unhealthy, super fast. Yeah. And, you know, even in, in my book, I used the mountain language. Since then, I only use sphere language because I realized, oh, man, anytime you have a mountain, people are going to lend themselves towards that hierarchical uh, idea. But the yeast in the dough is, is a sphere idea. It's wherever you are, wherever you find yourself in that culture, you can work in any direction to bring the goodness of God. So good. In any directions, in all directions, all at once, a lot of times just by showing up as a son and daughter who knows who they are and uh -huh. and is and, and is there to bring benevolent government to that sphere. Um you said something, oh my goodness, what did you say? Sorry, there's so many things. Um so we're whenever we bring that militaristic, oh I know I know it was my question. Um because I you you glossed over this fast because there's so much and I know. So we're uh governmentally you said we're part of the executive branch to bring legislative ministry, whatever you want to do that. Um, where does the judicial branch fit since we're like, you know, that's kind of government. Um, is it because a lot of times we, we we call ourselves judges and we get into trouble. Judge not lest you be judged. So does that fit in there? Does it not fit in there? What's your take on that? If you don't mind. Yeah. So it's funny about whenever you start talking about judges and courtrooms, right? <laughs> we ha we tend to immediately go to a modernistic Western American mindset surrounding that. And I'm like, well, first of all, is there a court in heaven? Yes, but it's a king's court, not a judicial court. And so secondarily, Ew. we have... <laughs> uh, evil right there. Okay, sorry, keep going. <laughs> no, I get it. Uh, secondarily... <laughs> You know, there's a whole book called Judges in the Bible, and, and judges were the leaders that provided wisdom to bring peace and harmony and to divvy up inheritance. And so why is it that we, we think judge and we think, again, we go to this, this uh, modern judicial system of handing out penalties when it should yeah, be handing out wisdom? Verdicts, out right? Penalties. A verdict of goodness, badness. Oh, sorry, go yeah. ahead. With, with, yeah. with punishment on the other side, right? Sentence. Right. Okay, yeah. sorry. Keep on going. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. I, I totally agree with you. And so I think that uh, understanding that the justice of God is always restorative and redemptive and never punitive. Thank uh, you. That's a whole nother piece we gotta we gotta get right, you know. And uh, I like to say the only uh, the only courts of heaven you'll find me at are the food courts of heaven. So. <laughs> Come on, chow down. I mean, that's so good. Yes, tacos or whatever you got going on there. Um, yeah. The food courts of heaven. Oh my God. I think I love it. Okay. It just makes me happy. Uh, so I love that. So we're talking about a King's court and it's so true because in our Western mindset, we, you know, we don't really do Kings. Uh, right. We do judges, we do, you know, no leaders or whatever, but we don't do Kings. And so we don't have this mindset of King and his kingdom and his court in the kingdom and how we operate there so that's so i'm sorry keep on going this is so good <laughs> oh no that, that, was, that was i think uh oh the ambassador piece the executive yes, yes. branch right mm -hmm. and so understanding when when it says that we are citizens of heaven so mm -hmm. again on the uh in the kingdom it's familial in nature we're sons and daughters right mm -hmm. we're becoming uh, kings and queens and should become fathers and mothers and then yeah. on the governmental side, we are citizens, not foreigners, right? So we have rights uh, that are mm -hmm. tied and held safely in the homeland uh, of heaven, from which we have been sent as ambassadors. An ambassador is a diplomat that has been sent to a foreign government for the purpose of peaceably mm -hmm. presenting the will of the head of state that they represent and to offer partnership 
in the legislation of new ways of doing culture. And so we are all ambassadors from Christ who have been sent to represent the ways and the nature of the king and to extend an invitation to the world's government, which is, is uh, loved by God, not hated by God, uh, but to offer an invitation for a better way of doing things. And so that, uh, that ambassadorial piece is, is huge. You know, you have uh, righteousness, uh, which is the uh, diplomatic immunity of the ambassador, right? Like it, it, all, it all fits together beautifully. Uh, on the governmental and the familial side. So good. I love the way it's such a seamless thing. Um, uh, and wow, that's, that's, that's so cool. And then we're replicating, right? The rep replicating heaven on earth. We're sending, it's kind of like the apostolos, right? That's sent out that's to recreate it. heaven, the culture of heaven in the, where, wherever it's sent out to, which is so amazing. Wow, That's that a, a huge piece that you bring up there as well, because the uh, the apostles, again, uh, apostles in, in Greek and Roman culture, they had governmental ranking, no military ranking. They were the second wave. They were architects of culture that came in after the Caesar had come in and defeated. So Jesus comes in, makes a mockery of the kingdom of darkness on the cross. It is demoted into a system of darkness because they no longer have a king. <laughs> so the oh, enemy goes you. from the ruler of this world, a king with a territory, to a prince of the air, someone with no authority and no territory, as Jesus makes a mockery of them on the cross. He returns yeah. home, sends Holy Spirit, the royal governor, to oversee an apostolic people, designers of culture, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to come in and, and replicate, as you said, the ways of the king here in the, in the, new, in the new world, right? Uh, the kingdom being the extension of the heart and the authority of God from heaven on earth through us. Wow. Boom. That was a lot right there. That's so, that's so good. How do you just, um, I mean, UN, that's a heavy duty, chaotic, just probably a really kind word <laughs> with lots of the Prince of the Year stuff happening. Um, just messed up then just not knowing, you know, just not knowing. And how do you find yourself just practically as a human being, as a minister, as a son of God, all of that um, operating in that metron behind the scenes because you're, you're seeing all sorts of abuses that have incredible influence that are harming. There's a lot of harm at a very yeah. high level. So it's a very large metron, right? Yes. And absolutely. so you're speaking into that. How, how do you, I mean, just personal, like, how do you cope or like whatever, or how do you, is it like God is like, he's just on you and we're sense and this is what we do, you know, but there's some dark stuff going on that, you know, is hard. It is just hard to see and hard to whatever. Um, mm -hmm. How do you find, how do you navigate yeah. on a more personal level? So, so for me, <laughs> the whole, you are the yeast of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that the, that the woman, the Holy Spirit is working into the dough, which is culture until the whole loaf, which is the world is risen, which has been made better. And so I see it as I'm showing up uh, as the yeast of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes religion has handed us answers uh, that we read into the text. So in scripture where it says, well, what relationship does light have with darkness? And religion would say, none, you better get out of there. But actually, no, no, no. Light has a relationship with darkness. It's transformative. Light transforms darkness, right? And so what relationship does, um, uh, you know, it talks about don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever, right? Which religion says don't partner with anything that isn't a believer. But whereas I would submit to you that it's actually don't go in thinking that they are the, the power that's going to drag you down. Re mm -hmm. Realize that you are commissioned under the authority of King Jesus. You are mm -hmm. filled with the person of the Holy Spirit, which happens to come with the actual power of God. And so you are the transformer in that relationship. And so when, when I partner with someone in the UN who is not a believer, first of mm -hmm. all, I, I refrain from being unequally yoked because I choose to see them as an equally loved son or daughter of God who just doesn't know it yet. Exactly. And then secondarily, I understand that, oh, I'm going to lift them up. They're not going to drag me down. <laughs> and so just keeping that mindset of I'm here to be the change, to be the light in the darkness. I've never seen light and darkness get in a scuffle. <laughs> yeah, no. Darkness doesn't want you back. Yeah. It gets lighter. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so the only reason, you know, the UN is as dark as it is, is because Christians demonized it and said the Antichrist is going to come from the UN. And, the, yes, and, yes, yes, and yes, so yes. Christians exited mm -hmm. and it got so the light left, it got darker. And then we patted ourselves on the back and said, see, I told you it was going to get super dark. And I'm like, It's only darker because we left. I so we that. must go back in. Vacated. Yes. Yes. Wow. And I mean, I, and I, you see that with arts and entertainment. I mean, you see that all, all in these spheres and then we're hunkered down in the sphere of, of religion, whatever you want to call it. And we're not being the yeast mm -hmm. that is spreading in this benign, uh, holy, happy infection <laughs> you yeah. Know, yeah. that yeah. we're called to, to be. Well, that is, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. You know, so, and, and I, you know, and, and I'm assuming for you, as you were kind of journeying uh, and understanding the kingdom and understanding how, how that kingdom is released and restoring our understanding of it so we could operate in it properly. Um, how, what would you say, say to, I don't know, uh, in, in, in the, in the sphere of, you say religion, and I, I know we're not, I, I think the sphere is so much better than mountain, um, but in the sphere of faith, whatever you want to call it, where we're wanting to be the yeast, we're wanting to be light that dispels and transforms darkness. Um, and, but we're still kind of hunkered down and and stuck in these ways of being, what would you speak to that person who's still struggling with this concept of kingdom and being that from that sphere? Mm -hmm. So I think that the more that you intentionally establish the kingdom within you, the more you will intuitively expand the kingdom around you. Mm -hmm. And so I would suggest, you know, really focusing on the identity portion and the origin portion. I, I think there are four questions that if you ask these questions, this is the reason that School of Kingdom exists, is uh, origin, where did you come from? Identity, who are you? Purpose, what is it that you bring to the table? And destiny, what table is waiting for you to show up? If you can answer those four questions, you cannot help but change the world. And so uh, I would focus on those first two. Origin, where did you come from? Well, you came from the heart of a good, kind, loving Heavenly Father. And who are you? You are his son. You are his daughter. You are a, a king of, of uh, one of the kings of the king, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you are an ambassador. You are a citizen. Uh, we should all be becoming fathers and mothers in the kingdom. That's the highest goal, right? And uh, as we focus on where we came from and who we are, then all of a sudden, we begin to catch the father's heart for the world, which is that he loves it. Most of Christendom is under this idea that, you know, he's he's being really patient right now. But man, he's soon he's going to have enough and he's going to come and, and handle some business. And I'm like, no, no, no. Uh, father loves the world. Business of love. He, that's what he's doing. But not, you know, not, not going to kick butt and take names. Right. Right. Yeah. So sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I agree. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, just focusing on that. And as you catch the heart of the father for the world, mm -hmm. then it becomes easy to uh, to be able to show up in those spaces. Uh, I, and just the truth that the kingdom is is very attractive. It's invitational in nature. Um, man, I will have a, a Buddhist leader or a, a Muslim leader grab a hold of a strategy from heaven so much quicker than a Christian would. <laughs> That Sadly. Is, uh, but that it, I mean, that is very sad, but it's so interesting. You're, they're being seen rightly and they're yes. not having to go through a bunch of uh, Christian filters that they have to recover from in order to be, to see it rightly. Right. Um, so, oh, that, I mean, that's, that's, that is so beautiful. What do you see in terms of kind of what God, how God is taking us, you know, maybe more prophetically, um, just as as the sons and daughters, as kings uh, in his kingdom, are you seeing any changes in how we're operating as eleven? What are you? What are you seeing? If you are seeing mm -hmm. new see. patterns or new things, where he's taking us? Yes, I, I'm super encouraged and uh, and full of hope. I think that. Um, I think that the world is getting tired of religion and is going after the truth. And, you know, 
the the whole reason that there is a deconstruction movement is simply people are asking valid questions and not being dignified with truth and answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so as as people are are leaving the religious structures in search of the truth, the thing that I'm seeing right now is really people grabbing a hold of the nature of God and and the nature of grace, Thank which you. is amazing. And and what I'm trying to do is bring in, which is really about origin and identity, right? Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to do is bring in the connection to purpose uh, purpose, so that yeah. you can understand, oh man, now that I know who my father is and who he says I am, I will never mature out of my sonship, but I mm -hmm. shall mature into my kingship. Thank and you. Sons experience the benefits of the kingdom. Kings have become the benefits of the kingdom to the pre-believer. And so uh, I think that it's, it's following the right path that people ne need to capture the nature of the king first and then be introduced into the ways of the kingdom and how to move in purpose. Uh, but I'm seeing a huge move in that direction. Uh, I would say that, you know, scripture says, the Lord Father said to my Lord Jesus, sit here as I make my enemies footstools under your feet. And God has never had a human that's an enemy. That's in reference to the demonic or mindsets that are counter kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I believe that over the last 2000 years, we have seen the occult uh, lose its its preeminence and its power. It's, it's falling in its influence. Mm -hmm. Is there still great evil upon the world in the world mm -hmm. of that strain? Yes, but in very small quantities, it's losing its hold. And the second thing that really had a hold on people was religion. And so mm -hmm. we're seeing that begin to fall and mm -hmm. people are getting tired of politics. And so the political mindset, it's the next one that's going to fall. And then all that's left is the kingdom. Oh, I love it. Oh, my gosh. So I'm super excited. No wonder you're happy and excited because that's that's a, a gorgeous take that is so healing. And I think intuitively, if, you know, as, as, as believers, a lot of times we disconnect ourselves from what intuitively, uh, like, you know, when you're nowhere, like this is not feeling right because we're trying to, uh, to force something to fit a, a faulty understanding of scripture, a faulty understanding with our doctrine, a faulty understanding of the King and his kingdom, all of that. Um, and we're trying to superimpose and we swelt ourselves down, whereas maybe the Buddhist or whatever is not struggling with that portion so mm -hmm. much, but we, we superimpose it. So we're, we're just in bondage and we deny this whole relational reality, which is the starting point. And I, what I'm loving is that you, you talk about origin, you talk about identity, which honestly is huge. I mean, it is the start. We got to get this first. And what I find people doing is that they take what they're sensing their purpose and destiny is, and they're trying to get their identity and origin mm -hmm. from that, which That's is true. the horse before the cart. Did I say that right? Because I always mix that up. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and so, which means we got to flip it back and coming from origin, coming from you know our identity, so that we're able to mature. And I love that concept of maturing because you are who you are, but we do need to mature. I mean, even Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor, right? So we're needing to mature as kings and knowing how to operate in that. And there's a metron, there's a place where it fits. You know, uh -huh. I like to tell people that you were his workmanship that was crafted for a purpose and the purpose was craft, crafted for you. So it fits and you don't have to jack Good. it up, prop it up force fit it, um, retrofit it, whatever, it flows naturally from origin and identity. Um, and I, 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 what's exciting is that when we kind of can get settled in this, um, we can really talk about purpose and we can really talk about destiny, where that all fits and have it fall in line in such a healthy, beautiful, seamless, God is flowing and that is so exciting. But I see a yeah. lot of people trying to, just in the people that I minister to, because I do a lot of wholeness coaching, which is pretty much all about origin and identity. <laughs> yeah. um, and then purpose gets to flow out of that. And, and almost as a byproduct. Did you find yeah. that like, as you get that, it's like, oh, there it is, um, as a byproduct of yes. that. And, uh, and so it's amazing to see people flowing in that in such a seamless way you know it's just it's it's beautiful i love that and i'm grateful that it sounds like your school of 
you, do you call it school of the kingdom or school of kingdom? A school of kingdom. School of kingdom. I like it. Um, is basically focusing on all of that to release people in that. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So okay. we kind of call our process detoxing from religion, developing kingship, learning how to design culture and being deployed into assignment. Boy, That's the goal. So good. And I love the deployment. I, you know, I understand my, my husband's in the Navy. So I think deployment, I think military. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just tell me, Jesus, you're going to help. You're helping me. It's a thing. Um, we're being deployed as ambassadors. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes, we're being deployed. And, and also kind of thinking of it as like a launching pad, you know, um, mm -hmm. in the church, when we came up with this crazy covering theology, right, when it's actually supposed oh, yeah. to be foundations where mm -hmm. Christ is the cornerstone. And then upon the foundation of the apostle and the prophet and the rest, you know, that they are built up. But we have this weird, like, who's your covering when the question should not be who's your covering. It should be who's your foundation. Yes. <laughs> and so uh, as we catch that and, and I've understood, oh, man, like what I get to do in School of Kingdom is be that launching pad to help uh, deploy people out to uh, to their place of assignment as as those diplomatic representatives, as the ambassadors of the king and the kingdom. and. Uh, yeah, it's it's awesome, man. Once you get detangled from religion, and uh, if you are wise enough to avoid the political uh, snare, right? Because yes. on earth as it is in heaven, there's government in heaven, but there's no politics in heaven. Politics is the dirty game that's played on the on the field of government. And so I love government. I hate politics, and I hate it when people mix uh, kingdom with politics. And uh, governance is, is again, that bringing chaos into order so that people are served well. It's not the capturing of, of seats of power and authority by different uh, groups, you know, and, and yeah, that's, that's it really, that's where. And putting your hope in that, like how depressing, like go stick your oh head, just God. cut to the chase, stick your head in the oven now, because it's not going to work and just go back to the king and the kingdom. <laughs> Because yes. truly, it's like, oh my goodness, that is not where your hope is. But your hope is in that. So when the in in the so I'm kind of glad you brought that up. So in the political arena, because we're heading into, oh my God, just help us, Jesus, another political brouhaha coming up. If we are in the United States, um, everybody yeah. pray for us. But um, so while we're heading into that, um. How do you do? You speak to that? Do you just hi on the eleven? I'm releasing government, so we're not so confused. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, you know, how, how do you, how do you navigate that? Because that's it's it, it, that government and politics in the in in the arena that you're been launched into is a really big deal. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So I think that um, the way that I navigate it is I have chosen to steward my heart so that I can work with anybody from either side of the aisle. It doesn't matter uh, who gets elected and in any nation and what they may have done up into the moment that they meet me. Mm -hmm. I understand I'm there as an ambassador of the kingdom to give them an opportunity to align with the king's heart for their people. And so, you know, and I had to, I had to teach myself how to do that, you know, so I would pull up uh, pictures of certain political people that rubbed me the wrong way. And I would just force myself to just stare at that picture and say, Father, give me your heart for them. Give me your eyes for them. How do you see them? What was their original intent? What was, how did you create them to operate? Because I must, in my interaction with them, I must respond to their original intent rather than react to their current actions. Okay. And um, the way he really unlocked that for me was really he began to show show me little pictures, words of knowledge about them as children. And that really helped me plug into the father heart for them. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I can adjust myself. Right. Because mm -hmm. it's not their responsibility. It's it's my responsibility to show up to represent the king rightly. And so I'm able to adjust myself and, and sit down with people that I would hotly disagree on on, on topics or whatnot. Because I realized the reason I'm here is to provide them with an opportunity to implement uh, a strategy of heaven. And if I'm offended with them, they'll never be able to receive from me. And so I try to share that story with people and, and just tell people, look, like, don't get caught up in the political nonsense that's going on. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I, tr I train government prophets and because the prophetic movement has suffered such an embarrassment over the last uh, several years. And I'm hoping that this year it won't be as bad because of how embarrassing it got. Uh, but um, yeah, when you got people 
operating as political profits rather than governmental profits, it gets nasty and messy really fast. And so, yeah, we've disconnected yeah. from our origin, right? We've disconnected from our origin, our identity, mm -hmm. and then the purpose and, and the destinies hijacked, which is so good. And I, I love that because really in that as human beings, we have to go before God with our own hearts, our own offenses, our own crap, you know, and just like, help, help me, help me see as you see, help me yeah. see their original intent, their original design, their identity, who they are, and then how that would play out as that is released first things first. Come and, on. you know, so, and that's such a good, healthy correction for us as leaders and just as people, you know, mm -hmm. because we have the politics that are going on in the government. We're politicking all the time at the office and at the, and in religion. Yeah. Right. We've yeah. got Herod and the, the leaven of Herod and where it is leavening. And so we need to be the kingdom. Right. That yeah. that leaven that conquers that that overtakes that and reestablishes bringing the order back into chaos in that. So that means we've got stuff to deal in our own hearts, which is really important. That's what makes us healthy. Right. Yeah. That's what makes us healthy as sons and daughters. Oh my goodness, that's so so exciting! Do you see anything um, uh, anything else that you're seeing prophetically for whatever for in in whatever arena, um, or for us as sons and daughters who are growing yeah. in the ability to be appropriate leaven? <laughs> I would say that uh, on the prophetic side of things, um, just as I was talking with the Lord about the beginning of this year, just hey God, what? How can I partner with you in this year and what should I expect um, to be different? And I heard him say that there would be less resistance towards uh, theological truths that have been uh, fought against pretty viscerally before. And mm -hmm. so uh, I think, you know, penal substitutionary atonement theory, eternal conscious torment, uh, uh, the idolatry of the Bible. Uh, I think that those three are really going to take a hit this year um, because people are, are tired of believing in Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I've even been like pushing things a little further. Uh, and uh, I dropped a message at the beginning of the year about casting out the fear of the Lord and uh, really the political and religious roots of that in Scripture. And that the, the oh, person of perfect love, who is the person of Jesus, came to cast out all fear. Uh, and I would say even especially fear of the Father. And uh, so, you know, I just I feel like we're really going to be able to push theologically within the church. And then revelatorily, I would say that uh, we, we are going to begin to open our eyes to how God is uh, utilizing technology and AI and media uh, mm. in, in ways that we have not been allowed to see before from religious lenses, right? Uh, mm. Because we've demonized, uh, demonized spheres rather than loved them well. Uh, but already what I would call secular kings or uh, orphan kings, the pre-believers who hold uh, authority, uh, they're already utilizing AI and, and different things in kingdom ways. And so uh, the digital minister for Taiwan, uh, Minister Tang, she has already implemented. This is not theoretical. This is actually happening right now. Uh, she has implemented an AI uh, algorithm on a civic platform where she posts the most controversial political issues. And as people hotly debate, uh, the AI program is running in the background to find the spots where they actually agree. Ooh. And then they are spotlighting and highlighting the places of agreement on media. I'm like, I wish the US would pay some attention to what's wow. going on. Wow. And so where a lot of Christendom demonizes AI, you know, and is like, oh, you know, the all sorts of nonsense. And a Christ. Blah, 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 blah. The kingdom is actually advancing through it at the hands of pre-believers. And I'm so excited by that. You know, that it, what is it producing? It's producing unity and it's producing peace. It's bringing chaos into order. And so the ability for us to begin to partner with the secular kings of the earth um, in the advancement of the kingdom and to, to take advantage of 
those partnerships and those uh, oh, that synergy yeah. that's available rather than having the whole oh no unequally yokes like we got to come up with a Christian version or someone's got to be wearing a Jesus T-shirt in order to prophesy. <laughs> it's like, right, no, no, no. Exactly. Truth is truth. It doesn't have to wear a Jesus T-shirt because truth is the person of Jesus. So when you release yeah. truth into a situation, it's going to do what truth does, which is make people free. Thank and so you. I'm excited. That is, oh, wow. That is so amazing. But, and I, and traditionally the church, because we're so bathed in fear, like mm -hmm. we are not matured up in perfect love. So fear, you know, don't touch, don't taste, don't whatever, don't partake, separate yourself and hunker down. Yeah. Um, and, and which, which pulls us out of being the leaven that we're called to do throughout every sphere of humanity. Yeah. I love the fact that you brought this AI thing up because, you know, I mean, it's a tool for good or for evil, but when you have non-believers, pre-believers, uh, because it's just a matter of belief. So what is God in them doing to help them believe, right? This is what we're doing. This is, we're talking about origin. We're talking about true identity, original design. So what does God do? so that this is actually being released in the kingdom, even though it's not done under Jesus label, but it is truth. And I love the humility of God where it's like, well, no, I really just don't need credit for this. I'm just seeing my kids yeah. set free and eventually it'll be obvious it was me, but yeah. you know, this, it's not, it's not about my PR. It's about my kids. So this is other giving love right there, operating in the pre-believer a lot of times better than the church. And so as the body uh, what we need to be grabbing a hold of what does this mean? How does the leaven, I would put the leaven of love, but whatever you, however, whatever language, the leaven of the kingdom look like in this arena with yeah. this tool that, and the, so we don't need to be afraid of it, but we do need yeah. to speak to it. Right. Yeah. And so, and, and, and use it and use Absolutely. it to expand the kingdom. Oh, I love that. That's so amazing. How refreshing is that? <laughs> right. Yes. And doesn't it give you confidence in God that we have all these pre-believers that are tracking with God and it's like the, the church needs to catch up, you know, Absolutely. no condemnation, but like, let, let's get our crap together, right? You know, let's yeah. get it, let's get it going on. So they need to sign up for your class is just a thing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good start. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Now I understand speaking of that, which is the perfect segue. Um, I want to make sure I get this in. You are offering a free course, Kingdom 101. You want to tell yes. us? About yes. Yeah, just at, uh, at kingdomintro.com. Uh, that's where we host our Evergreen Kingdom 101 course. And it's just a, a couple of courses that really dig down into uh, the original intent of mankind, the garden reality uh, that we have been restored to with upgrades. And then uh, I also have my message in there, the redemption of Cain, which uh, really breaks down. You know, we've all been taught that, you know, Cain was he was the murderer and he was marked and then he, you know, uh, all of those things. But the, the truth is that it's a beautiful story of redemption and uh, and just really shows the father heart of God. And even on that justice piece, you know, once you understand that Cain was redeemed and I break all of that down in that teaching, then you understand that the blood of Abel was calling out not for a punishment on his brother, but for a restoration of his brother, which is that changes everything. Oh, and so God. that's in that free course. And so oh, I'd love people to snag it. What a power packed course. Wow. OK, so I'll be including the link for that. And then I, I know you have uh, the School of the Kingdom. It's closed for the for a minute, but coming July, it's coming mm -hmm. back open. So but I'm boarding in January for, and July. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, you have your book from the cult to the kingdom. Now, share what that's about. I'm assuming that's on Amazon and I'll share the link, right? Yes, it is on Amazon, and it's just my story all the way from uh, growing up in uh, in South Oak Cliff, and then the Amishish cult era, and then just my journey into the understanding of the kingdom and how to uh, how to navigate uh, spheres of culture well, and to bring real tangible change. So, yeah. absolutely. So, what's on the agenda? Where where can you can you tell me, or would you have to shoot me? Can you tell me what you're doing next, or? Oh, we don't do violence. Okay. So I'm good. I'm safe. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, I'm really working on developing uh, business specific um, 
Kingdom Revelation right now because I believe to bring the quickest impact to a nation, if we really want to end up discipling nations, uh, we have to understand the government and the business sector or realms and how they must operate together in a kingdom way. Those two have to interface, and, and that will be the quickest way to jumpstart uh, real change in nations. And so that's really what I'm digging into and going after right now. Uh, is just developing my understanding in the vernacular, how to navigate the business spheres in the same way that I know how to navigate governmental spheres. And so i uh, been doing that. And then, um, yeah, just uh, the, the school continues to, to grow and expand. We have a school in Australia, a school in South Africa, and we've got uh, probably uh, two more international schools that will be launching uh, by the end of the year as well. And so, yeah, just trying to equip people with... Uh, with good theology and practical skill sets uh, when it comes to the prophetic and how to reform spheres back to their original design uh, in an invitational way. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what I'm working on right now. Oh my goodness. How exciting. Now tell me about your, your, uh, your podcast, the, the Joe kingdom perspective. That's adorable, by the way, what a cute name. I mean, sorry, I don't mean it. That was not patronizing. It was just oh, I mean, good. like, it, like it. Okay. Oh, yeah. So us <laughs> about that. Yeah. So the story behind that is uh, I love the Joe Rogan experience and mm -hmm. it's uh, I just listen to it all the time. And because of my lens and my mindset, this is how I'm always identifying how the kingdom is advancing in the most unexpected of ways through the most unexpected of people in the most unexpected of places. And so like, that's where I heard about Minister Tang implementing the AI in uh, uh, in that civic platform. Right. And so I would just call my friends and be like, hey, did you hear this clip on, on the JRE? Look how the kingdom is advancing. And then I realized, man, I'm having these conversations anyway. Why don't we create a podcast out of it? And so myself and uh, a couple of fellow revelators and professors in School of Kingdom, the Ryan Pena and uh, Dr. Tony Robinson, uh, will play a clip from the JRE, like, like the one uh, we just dropped uh, on what Minister Tang is doing. And then we rel uh, uh, rel uh, revelate on on just like, look and see how the kingdom is advancing uh, through the pre-believers. And it's, it just brings hope. It brings encouragement. And it helps us remember the truth that the world is getting better. And it has been for 2000 years. <laughs> It is. And how masterful is God that he's not, he's, he's bypass, uh, bypassing where you, where people are in their belief systems to basically be using them intuitively as sons and daughters who don't know their sons and daughters yet, which exactly. is incredible. And so that gives us hope, like maybe, maybe we can get it together as believers, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe that's a thing, but yeah. anyway, oh my goodness, that is so encouraging. So, and how you're able to see that. So, which gives us such hope that things are getting lighter and lighter and brighter and brighter yes. in the midst of darkness. Cause the leaven's actually working. It's yeah. like this relentless love takeover that is happening and it is actually working and we get to be a part. Yes. That's why we really need to be tracking with, you know, who we are and, and all of that original origin, who we are, and then our purpose and destiny um, and trusting God to bring that out seamlessly because he doesn't have favorites. We all get oh, to be his favorites. Absolutely. I love that. Wow. That's beautiful. Oh my goodness. This has been so much fun. We could just go on and on and on, but we're kind of at the top of the hour. Dang it. So anyway, <laughs> well, Thanks so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. It was a great conversation. Oh, it was just fabulous. Um, if they just want to get in touch with you, how would you direct someone? Yeah, uh, so uh, or... they can either hit uh, support at schoolofkingdom.com or uh, I'm pretty, pretty available on Facebook. I try to, uh, uh, I threw messenger there, try to keep up with, with people and be as available as I can. So. Sure. Yeah. Given the fact that you actually have, have a life and probably need to sleep sometime, <laughs> uh, you know, all of that. But anyway, while you're there, donate, whatever. I assume there's like a support me, donate button at support. Uh, yeah, no. That I can support you in what you're doing. Yes. Uh, no. So School of Kingdom oh, is a business. Yeah. And so I don't have a, yeah. uh, a, uh, a 501c3 that is, uh, that that is stemming from. I appreciate that though, for sure. Okay. Well, support him by signing up for the class, but you yeah, need it me. and I need it for me. So that's, that's so good. Well, it has been a joy. Oh my goodness. You're so amazing. And it's just been a joy getting to know you a little better. 
finally. And then what you're up to is breathtaking. It's beautiful. So thank, thank you. you so much. It's a good time to the king. To the king. Woohoo. Awesome. Well, everybody share this, like this, whatever. Uh, people need to hear this. And I know there's a bunch of people that are going to want to sign up for your course. So I'm really excited, that, especially with the freebie, Thanks. like go in. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Love you guys. Love to you, Dub. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Perspectives with Catherine Toon. For additional information and resources, please visit catherinetoon.com.